Taxation and CO2 pricing. What is the proposal from the European Commission to introduce CO2 pricing in the built environment and transportation? I mentioned the maritime industry, is maritime sector is added to the existing balloon and a new emission trading scheme is set up for the built environment and transportation sector. So these, um, this is actually a separate balloon, a separate emission trading scheme. So I mentioned it earlier when, when answering questions, there was only one ETS, there will be multiple. Um, there, is ref there are references in the Green Deal text that maybe in the future they may look at merging these balloons, merging these emission trading schemes, but nothing is certain because probably there will be different price mechanics, price levels, uh, and uh, uh, for now they are separate. Some context, 36% um, uh, of CO2 and DHG emissions is related to the built environment. That's covering both indirect and direct emissions. How does that work, direct and indirect emissions? Well, let me explain. First of all, the built environment receives a lot of energy from either electricity or heating grids um, uh, to, th that is provided to the built environment. Typically, electricity and heating grids are connected to big factories with big chimneys. Those are already covered by the existing balloon, by the existing ETS. But wait, there's more. Uh, the built environment also relies on oil products, on gas, natural gas, and coal. A lot of houses in Europe are still heated by oil products, coal, or gas. And these are not provided by these companies that are already under the ETS, but do result in um, emissions through a lot of small chimneys. And the same thing applies to road transportation, whether it's um, uh, big trucks, small trucks, cars, anything that's on the road will produce emissions from, uh, well, mostly oil products, but also gas. Um, and these emissions from trucks and houses is actually so far unpriced. So this is, this is the missing link, right? You also would want to tax or price it, uh, the, these emissions. Now, the European Commission is coming with a proposal to do exactly that. And they're not coming for you as a household or a driver of a car. You don't have to comply with this complex ETS system and verify your emissions. And uh, it just doesn't work for, for, for households and SMEs. And you need that only works for big corporations. But how are they going to introduce an emission trading scheme then? Well, be, by applying it on the fuel suppliers. So any supplier of coal products or of gas, of oil products, they will fall under a new balloon. Or in regulatory terms, uh, the entities uh, are responsible for release for consumption of uh, fuels which are used for combustion in buildings and road transport, they are the regulated entity. So they would have to report and verify and pay. Of course, as a house owner or as a driver of a car, truck, whatever, you will feel it if you don't become more sustainable because prices for all these fuels will obviously rise. The suppliers will just pass these costs on to the end user. So you don't have to, the burden of the, the regulatory framework, that's for the fuel suppliers, but eventually this will lead to fossil fuels becoming more expensive, basically bridging the, the gap between the cost differential between these fossil fuels and the sustainable alternatives. Very important. So these, um, this balloon for uh, energy suppliers uh, obviously also deflates over time. Um, um, so how fast does it deflate over time? Well, by 5.15% per year between 2024 and subsequent years. If you extrapolate that to 20, 2050, you actually end up below zero. That's not what's gonna happen, but it will reach zero uh, somewhere along the way. And there is a provision in there that if emissions between now and 2024 or so become higher than anticipated, the, the balloon actually deflates even faster after 2028 by 5.43%. Obviously, I just told you energy for households is becoming more expensive. I also mentioned earlier that about 7% uh, of European households lives under energy poverty, having trouble to pay their uh, energy bills or to even pay for investments uh, to make their house 
more sustainable. Um, if we're going to introduce this emission trading scheme for fuel suppliers, that is going to get worse if we don't do anything about it. And this is where, uh, again, the European Commission comes in because they propose uh, to um, actually use the proceeds of auctioning allowances to, to, to fuel suppliers uh, to offset that cost increase. Obviously, if all energy suppliers in Europe are charged, that is going to lead to a lot of auction revenues. Auctions, by the way, are done by member states. But in, this, in the proposal by the European Commission, a quarter of revenues should be funneled up to the European Union. That, according to projections, but market prices can go up and down, so this is uncertain. But according to projections, that should lead to a fund of 72 billion euros over 2025 to 2032, the Social Climate Fund. Um, and that fund should be used to offset any cost increases for families living in energy poverty. Obviously, the question is how to do it. Well, I come from the Netherlands, so I take the Netherlands as an example. Could be any European member state, but any, let's say the Netherlands, um, uh, is obligated to make a social climate plan. They make a social climate plan with either income or investment support for families under energy poverty. And I mentioned earlier when we talked energy efficiency, a national energy efficiency fund could be one of those instruments to, to cover these, um, these cost increases. That plan is sent to the EU for approval. And if approval is granted, up to 50% of the financing for the, for the plans in the social climate plan would come from the social climate fund. So the social climate fund and the social climate plan are two distinct things that coexist, that work together. Um, obviously, 50% of financing is not enough. Where does the other 50% come from? from the member states, and probably the other auction revenues are used for that. So uh, that's why the European Commission is saying, through this mechanism, uh, more than 140 billion euros will become available for households living in energy poverty. But most of all, uh, through this mechanism, member states are forced to fo uh, focus their attention on um, uh, households living under energy poverty and will be forced to draft plans and to monitor. So uh, to make sure that this doesn't uh, slip off the radar. So I think it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting um, um, uh, system for, um, for to, 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 to make this work. The proof is in the eating of the pudding, obviously. <laughs> so as I mentioned, a lot of CO2 so far is unpriced and CO2 emissions in the built environment and road transport are still rising. That is not ideal if you want to become the first climate neutral continent by 2050. So uh, a CO2 price is included in the fuel price. So end users simply uh, notice probably fuel prices rising over time. And the balloon goes to zero. So these prices will probably lead to fuel prices becoming so high that the green alternative naturally becomes more attractive. Suppliers are the ones under the new ETS, and 25% of auction revenues goes into a social climate fund that, in combination with um, social climate plans made by the EU member states, should cover the cost for households living under energy poverty. Quickly look at some questions. Um, is the carbon price the same across different ETSs? No. Uh, this is a different ETS, so the price could be different. If they eventually decide to merge the two ETSs, could be, could not be, then obviously you'd, you'd, merge, you, you'd come to a, to, a, to, to a single price. But this would be a separate ETS. Uh, one question on shipping. Is hydrogen going to be one of the main solutions on shipping? Um, hydrogen uh, could become a, a solution, but there are, as I also mentioned in the, the chapter on uh, taxation of fuels, there are many sustainable fuels that could play a role. And probably there is also now a mix of fuels uh, playing a role in the shipping industry. Uh, hydrogen could be part of that.